and one. Clean your feet. We're back in the garage with Bodie Stroud. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to In the Garage. Um, today we've been talking about, uh, you know, registering your vehicle and the requirements you got to go through and what, you, what to do if it's been sitting, you know, a real long time. But um, I got a good friend George Molina on the phone with us. Um, and before we went to commercial, we started talking about, I think we were, uh-oh, Maybe not we, but me started getting a little upset with the EPA <laughs> and the requirements that they're making. And, and I mean, I, I realize, George, that this, you know, is out of your realm as well, and, and you aren't part of that. But uh, it led me to the insurance companies and everything, you know, and, and the requirements. And, and um, you know, it's it just seems to, if you own an old car, it just seems like kind of a headache. I mean, and let after you jump through all the hoops, it's a good thing because then you just pay that that small registration fee every year. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do. And you don't have to get them smogged, and uh, and you can cruise them. But like I said, you know, most of these guys, we just did a uh, a forty nine Merc that Mitchell was working on uh, yesterday. Nice old guy, Jack. Uh, I don't know how old would you say he is? Seventies, probably yeah. in his seventies. But he's got six cars. I mean, this car was beautiful. It was immaculate. And he says, you know, I drive each car a 1,000 miles a year. And I thought, wow, that's the most I've heard out of anybody. Well, ex unless you're Jay Leno. You know, Jay drives his quite a bit. He's a good friend of mine, and he uh, he seems to drive his all the time. I don't know how he does it, but, uh, well, actually, I do. <laughs> his guys get it ready for him. He shows up, and he drives away. It's that exactly. easy. <laughs> the rest of us don't have that uh, <clears throat> that luxury. But anyways, um, it, you deal with the insurance companies quite a bit, don't you, George? We deal with it on the fact that, you know, when we recover the stolen cars and work with them, if we believe there's an insurance fraud. Mm -hmm. And we see a lot of insurance fraud in the collector car business. Oh, yeah. Um, everybody had the equity money and back you were then and then uh, fixing these cars up. I'm sorry, what's that? You were telling me uh, last night a little bit about uh, what happens when, after you recover a stolen car and, and, you know, what happens between the insurance company and the owner. Can you talk about that? Well, yeah. Um, well, just real quick, we are seeing a lot of this uh, insurance frauds on these uh, uh -huh. on these cars who just people are hurting now and you know and they're making these cars kind of disappear sure and we are going after the owners um, working with the insurance company then also as we mentioned last night is uh, you spend all this time and money and somebody does steal your car and you get paid off on it and then a month later I find it at a shop somewhere or somebody's backyard um, that car is going now that, that car is now owned by the insurance company yeah. So uh, we've seen this. Uh, I've had a beautiful Camaro uh, convertible, 69. The guy was trying to register at the DMV. We got called. We went to look at it and found out it was a new Mexican stolen taken 21 years ago. Mm -hmm. It was already dropped out of the system. They got new paperwork on it. And wow. uh, he was trying to register where we ID'd it to that stolen. Well, that owner who had it back 20 years ago got the car. And the guy got left with uh, nothing in, except a fifty thousand dollar bill that he g paid somebody to fix it. Oh man! So he lost out on that car, and it went back to the original owner because he still had title to that car. Oh wow. Jesus! So there you go. So Do that your can, homework. That can happen. So I'm telling people, like I'm telling you earlier, get that yeah. car. Don't start fixing it and spending all this money on it, and then trying to go register it. Get it registered first. Get it verified. Get a title for it. If you, if you don't want to register, just get a title only, yeah. and just put that thing in a safe deposit box, and you're and you're safe. And then uh, go it's start yours. fixing it. Yeah. Now, at least it's already been checked. But now when you're trying to do it backwards, which I'm guilty of <laughs> doing but in it the happens. past. <laughs> well, it does. You get a customer that comes in. They're totally excited. They bring you the car. The last thing on my mind is checking their all their information, registration, their title, their VIN. I'm just so excited i got the job i'm starting to think of the creative part of, of building sure. the car and and i just we start tearing that thing down there well, you are a week reason, later it's in a million pieces <laughs> well that's the reason why you had me on the show and we yes. were talking a couple weeks ago is hey yep. these, there's a lot of questions out there and you know and maybe it's a good idea that you come on and and lapd said yeah go ahead and do and do the show because i got to get approval from them yeah that let these people out there know hey 
you know, to, to protect them. We want people to enjoy their stuff, and and we want you guys to stay in business. Yes. Uh, well, I mean, it was a it was a great topic. I mean, seriously, as soon as we posted it everywhere, we got you know quite a few emails on it, and everything else, mm -hmm. and and um, another question was, you know, and people are really don't know this is you know how do i identify my engine can you swap out an engine you know what i mean and then get it registered this that was one of the questions we got asked so you can swap it out as long as you as long as you keep receipts for your 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 uh your engine that's fine yeah that's not going to be an issue as long as you have receipts where you got the engine when you're trying to get to verified mm -hmm. um uh, that's what I'm saying. Get the stuff verified first, and then uh, keep receipts yeah. of it. So if I do come across it, maybe at a car show or somebody's um, repair shop, and I look at it, I can ask, "Hey, where'd you get the engine from?" And they can show a receipt, and then I'll say, "Okay, fine," and we move on to the next car. Gotcha. And that's that's one of the things. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, is I, I do a lot of inspections of uh, of shops. That's uh, in the LAPD Commercial Crimes Division. In our auto theft section. We have guys that specialize in identity theft. Where people go and use your information to buy uh, buy a car. Oh wow! Uh, we have, and they take it straight to the chop shop. They get cut up or or use it until a dealer can figure out who, what happened, and they've had it for six months. And during that time, they're just driving it around. Gotcha. Um, and then me, I do the dismantlers, auto body, auto repair shops, and I'm looking for those stolen cars, stolen parts, looking for those classics that are. That you the, just, uh, you guys just found, or you just found uh, John Travolta's car, didn't you? From yes, I, I did. Yes, uh, I heard this guy, you know, it's, it's a specialty car, a 280 SL, mm -hmm. and there has to be a demand for it. Somebody needed this car, these parts. And so I, I started doing some research on a guy that was stealing them uh, back in the day. That's what he loved, 280 SLs. And then just started watching him and following him around and talked to him and jammed him. And he, wow. committed, he admitted, uh, admitted to taking it and about eight other Mercedes and about 20 He admitted Mustangs. to taking it, huh? What's that? He admitted to taking it? He admitted to taking it. I'm thinking That's about any like other cheating. Mercedes. You never admit it. Do you, do you, Mitchell? <laughs> you, you just never admit it. And a 20, he, he took about 20 Mustangs also. Classic. Wow. And All right. A, that's well, another topic. Yeah, well, let's hold on to that. Can you hang around for yeah. the next segment? Sure. Okay, cool. We're going to take a break real quick, and uh, we'll come back. And remember, if you ever got any questions, uh, BS Hot Rods at... Info at oh, bs info at bs All right. Whether you're restoring a classic car, building a hot rod, or just bringing your daily